Welcome to the USCA American Rules Croquet National Championship Tournament held in October of 2021. This is Court 4 at the National Croquet Center in West Palm Beach, Florida. Your tournament director is Rich Curtis, past president of the USCA and a Hall of Famer. And your videographer, again, is Brian Hovis. This is a championship singles winner's bracket game. Single elimination between Sharif Abdelwahab at a handicap of minus three. I'm not going to go on about these guys. Sharif has 17 national championships. And is a true mainstay of croquet in America. Against Danny Honeycutt at minus four, who has nine national championships and copious international experience at the McRobb and Solomon Cup level. Whoever loses this goes into the loser's bracket in double elimination. Sharif came in with blue and went to corner four, which really good players tend to do against each other. A seemingly safe position since blue so far away. Yeah, right. Dead in this board includes clip position. Random fact. Sharif won his first national championship in 1999 with Mick Mijas. Mick Mijas was a big proponent of the out game, which these guys are using to keep the other guy from getting a break going. Is there nowhere to hide? They're dead on each other, so even though there are no other balls in the game, wiring is not an issue.
in these clearing shots, center ball is way more important than hitting it hard because it gives you the best bang for your buck on the object ball and leaves the striker ball where you want it. Nobody's missed a long row K yet. And I keep saying this, I'm sorry, but it's so important. Notice how the, the drive shot approach to the hoop now gives him the potential of getting a rush on the yellow ball to his next hoop, and he doesn't have to baby this hoop. And that's why the primary single ball shot you should practice besides hoop shots is a rush. So red accidentally knocks black into the game, and that's part of why he put it there, especially in golf croquet. You expect that to happen a certain percentage of the time. And the fourth straight row K of 40 feet or more by these guys, three by Sharif and one by Danny. Nobody's missed yet. And watch this, he's going to do a drive shot approach from way back here. This takes some practice and he's had a lot. Wiley actually mentions the importance of being able to do this at three back when you're trying to set up a straight triple.
When I first watched this, I thought he had forgotten to roque blue after he made the hoop, but what, right here, he moves blue a little bit. <laughs> Blue's clip goes on five because he peeled it through four. I obviously don't know what he's thinking, but it could be about the leave because blue being for five makes the leave challenging and he doesn't have access to red, which makes it even more so. It's always nice to make one back before the opponent has any deadness to clear.
In a game like croquet where everything is stationary when you start your swing, the balance between an athletic sense of flow and being very precise on each shot is something each player has to arrive at individually. Sharif has an exceptional sense of flow that I think is deceptive because he's really very careful on each shot. And this is why they play the out game. Danny accidentally knocked Black into the game and thought, well, at least I deprived him of a continuation shot. But then Black promptly makes a 42-foot row K, a 75-foot rush to hoop two, a two-ball break for two hoops, and then a three-ball break to Rover. Give him an inch, he'll take a mile, a proverb that first appeared in 1546 in its original form. And here, I'll bet he's thinking about how to set up to cannon red back out of position after Danny puts it in front of hoop one again. And just so you know, I make those guesses the first time I watch these games, but then I take them out if they're wrong. Check out my playlist for the Midwest Regional in 2018. Sharif played Britt Ruby and did this to him four or five times. That red ball never did make it into the game in Tulsa. You can see that red's in the way of yellow's shot on blue and black. <clears throat> and since it's not in the game, Danny can have it lifted. And even though Sharif is responsible for red's position, Danny can't claim a wire based on that because red can be lifted. The first long row K they've missed. He ordinarily would hit a drive shot here to put black down toward six and continue the two ball break for blue. But I think he's planning on getting past black on the hoop shot and bringing it back to put it in hoop shooting or peeling position. So much for that plan.
this decision is influenced by whether he's wired from yellow by hoop one or not. Maybe some bird lover can identify that call for us. They ultimately decided that Blue had in fact made the hoop and Sharif just went down by corner two. Brian had to change batteries so there was a bit of a gap. And change battery. Sorry about that. Blue made it through the wicket, and then he shot out corner two. Sharif seemingly in control with a lead of 16 to 3, but at this level with everybody capable of aggressive attacking and running breaks, no lead is truly safe. And notice how Sharif isn't joining up with blue with black, he's putting it as far from red's hoop 2 as possible to take away attacking and croquet out options for Danny. You're watching the background, you might wonder if I only post videos that have Sandy Knuth in them. That is categorically not true. The heavyweights have retreated to their corners for the next round. Blue passes.
Rick Sheely assuming the wire checking position. Blue is for six, so this helps prepare for that approach. Danny's now set up to attack these two balls in corner three, so Sharif is going to separate. But where he goes, a long way from black in the middle of the east boundary, gives Danny an opportunity. Danny's first thought here is probably should I wait and give this break to Red because Red can make a few more hoops and more importantly can peel and peg out black so there's nobody to take the long shot on the unhittable leave. However, Sharif just handed him a three ball break on a platter and he doesn't know what's going to happen with black so he's going to give the break to yellow instead. Danny and Doug Grimsley and Matthew Essick and Randy Cardo all just love doing big aggressive croquet outs. So red gets partner dead but it's sitting right next to yellow's hoop five and yellow's right next to blue. Black to play.
Sorry about the dead horse thing, but for those who don't know, that's why he put red where he did. So he could get blue to two back and have a nice rush to one back. And this is a good demonstration of why keeping pioneers inside the rectangle formed by the outside four hoops makes life easier in a three ball break. He wants to pick up black in corner three, so instead of putting blue to the west of the hoop just to continue the break, he puts it to the east to make it easier to go into corner three.
It was at this point that the digital goblins ran off with the video clip of the next seven or eight minutes of this game. The board represents the state of the game right now. I think what happened is Danny went to Rover and elected to stop rather than breaking down because yellow is clean at the end of this. Sharif they didn't hit in with blue, went round from hoop six through Rover, and we pick up with his having just made Rover probably dead on black with decisions to make. The board represents the state of the game right now. When yellow made one back on Danny's break, black took the clearance, and Sharif is up by 11 hoops. The yellow ball is over halfway between hoop three and corner three. This pause is to give you time to decide what you would do in this situation. Blues for the peg and dead on black. Black has an easy shot on Rover and can peg out in one turn probably. So do you peg out blue? or keep it in the game and play the rover game in case something goes wrong with black at rover. Sharif decides to put red a long way from black and peg out blue. So now he's up by 12. So now we add a points column to the board Red gets the one back clearance from Blue's break. And it's a two ball to one game. They both expect Black to finish in his next turn. But it's not to be. Hey, me. I get it. Brian Hovis gets to make an appearance from behind the camera. Black is for the peg, red and yellow are for two and rover. But it is Danny Honeycutt he's playing. Don't assume it's over. I know Sharif isn't assuming it's over. Too much furniture for a shot at the peg. If he leaves Black out on the lawn at any time, he's going to lose. Two-on-one games a lot more common in AC than American rules, mostly because there's just more time for it to develop in AC. And usually in American rules, it happens right at the end of the game. But because he has so much AC experience, Danny has done an extensive analysis of this two-on-one situation. And he's going to use those principles in this game.
second shot at the peg. In here, rather than kick yellow out past three so he can continue the break, he's going to set a trap in case Sharif decides to take this shot. So he puts yellow over where it can pick up black if Sharif shoots at the peg and misses. And then yellow would be able to set a three ball break for red. And blue's not there to do anything about it. I fell off my chair when I first saw him take this shot. I think he's shooting at the peg because he's going from corner to corner, but he must have figured that if he missed the peg, which he did, it would put black far no, enough away from yellow that it functions as a tice for yellow because if red and yellow make any mistake at all, black wins. In AC, he never would have taken that shot because black would have been marked in a yard and yellow would have had no trouble picking it up. So instead of sending yellow to hoop four to continue the break, Danny's going to put yellow where it's going to guard black's next shot on the hoop. For the two ball player with the single ball for the peg, this is more about keeping the single ball from shooting than it is about making hoops in a hurry. Of course, the time limit in American rules means after a while you have to stop just making a hoop and guarding the opponent's peg shot. You got to catch up. And after hoop four is the perfect time to put to good use that two ball break you should have been practicing.
I don't know how much time is left, but I'm guessing Danny wants to finish on this turn, and the only way he's going to do that is to pick up black in the corner, send it as a pioneer to two back, and then make one back with red. I think the way both of these guys play is a great demonstration of the advantage of playing lots of AC and even golf croquet because they free you up from the constraints and inhibition that are inherent to the rules of the American game, namely the loss of turn for knocking a ball out that's only nine inches in and carry over deadness. At this point, all Danny has to do is finish a three ball break from two back, get one peel on yellow and peg out. I think Sharif is probably worried. Funny how the hoops get in the way of even the most straightforward of plans. So Danny was able to make six hoops, decrease the lead from 13 to 7, and limit Sharif to one long shot on the peg. If Sharif hits anything now, though, it's over. And now because Blue's not in the game, Danny has another three ball break opportunity. Quick now, do you take a 44 foot shot at a double target or a 28 foot shot at the peg? Sharif is going to shoot at those two balls, so he, they must look like a good double to him. It's effectively 22 feet versus the 28 feet 
to the pig. There is no way in hell he meant to do that. The third miss on the peg. Danny rushed yellow to where you see it and then stuffed Penault, and he's now stuffed three out of the last four hoops. Sharif is correctly going to shoot at the ball because it's bigger and a tiny bit closer than the peg. Actually, if the distance to the ball is less than 1.4 times the distance to the peg, you should shoot at the ball. My derivation of the equation that demonstrates that is found at the end of the Blue Crab final on this channel. Having made Rover with red, all Danny has to do is give Yellow a rush to Rover and let Yellow finish the game. And he can get wired from black because he's not responsible for black. Black does have one last chance, however. He got it. He got it. So it is customary flair for the dramatic. Sharif Abdelwahab waits till the very last minute to beat Danny Honeycutt 26 to 23 in a game that shows us just what's possible in American Rules Croquet.